Right, right. Speaking of uh, impatience, Dalton Schultz is impatient huh. for his new deal. There which, he is. And that's what we call a segue. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. So, so what we got here? I, I, I know, yeah. I know some of the basics here, but mm-hmm. um, I'm kind of trying to process this because I'm still wrestling with the fact he's making 11 million this year. Right. Well, you know, Cowboys do the Cowboys way. They want to sit around, play around. I think honestly that uh, when Blake Jarwin went down and, you know, mm-hmm. he basically was done uh, with the Cowboys, which once again, it hurts my soul that he couldn't be there because I feel like he still was a better overall player right. than Dalton Schultz. He just wasn't healthy. So I just feel like that threw a monkey wrench in it. They didn't jump out there and do it. You know how they love the draft and they were going to attack the draft with a tight end. They brought five of them in on their pro uh, uh, 30 visits. So, you know, it was happening. Um, but I felt like once they lost Blake Jarwin, they got nervous. We don't have nobody. Uh, who do we have? We saw what he's done the last couple of years. Let's just franchise tag him and just figure it out. You know what I mean? Yep. Let's just tag him, figure it out, and we'll go from there. Um, but you didn't have to do that. You could have let him play um, and check the – the uh, le- hey, go out there and check the free agent market. You could have did that because we have been talking about Hayden Hurst was out there. He signed for like $3 million. O.J. Mm-hmm. Howard, those mm-hmm. guys were out there. Dalton Schultz is not better than those guys, in my opinion. And, and Joko, who just got that money – where he's frustrated because Njoko got the four-year, $56 million deal, $28 million guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure he's frustrated with that. But if we're looking at the eye test, Njoko is better than him. Yeah. Don- Dalton Schultz is a basic tight end, and he's frustrated because now we were talking about on the final word yesterday, Dallas Cowboys made him feel special by tagging him. So now he's like, well, I want to get paid. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, in my opinion, DDP. You uh, you deserve it. If you see these other guys that your numbers are better than them, yeah, you should go for that. But in my opinion, I wouldn't extend a Don Schultz. I would let him play on that one-year tag because he's not going to sit out. He's not right. going to take them fines. He's going to play this year. So I would use that one year, develop Jake Ferguson, see what you have in uh, Sean McKeon, and then you can still draft next year. You have Jeremy Sprinkle, who's a blocking tight end. You have that kid from Indiana, Pendergrass, or Pender, I, I can't remember his name, but he's really athletic. He's yeah. 6'6'2". You can stash him on a practice squad. So see what you have this year. Don't jump in there because I feel like you made a mistake in tagging him, but don't jump in there and make another mistake, in my opinion, by paying him that money. Even if you have it out in a couple of years, you don't have to pay him $14 million a year mm-hmm. when you can just use this year to find out what you have in Ferguson and move on. And he's cheaper. Yeah. I, I think Dalton Schultz, I think he's fine as a tight end. Like his numbers were, were pretty solid, obviously last year, career year, uh, mm-hmm. definitely has a rapport with Dak, good friends yeah. with him. I think all of that helped. Uh, I agree that, you know, the, the Jarwin situation kind of made them feel some pressure. I think also just the way that the off season as a whole was kind of unfolding. They didn't want to look like they wanted any small win they could get. And so it was like, we've, we've re-signed Gallup. We've uh, franchise tag Dalton Schultz. And everyone's right. like, you're paying 11 million for Dalton Schultz. Really? Like I, he's not worth 11 million, but like, Mm-mm. so like, are you, but are you, trying to buy just one year of Dalton Schultz and just like, ah, fine, we'll deal with it for one year because we're going to draft someone, you know, you get Ferguson, we're going to try and develop him in that year and just do a handoff where it's not just a complete drop at that position for one year. Yeah. I assume it's that. Yeah. You don't, you don't give a long-term deal to Dalton Schultz. He's, he's in his uh, justification. He's right for trying to get that security. Cause right. You know, they're not going to, they're certainly not going to franchise him again. He'd get a 20% kicker on top of right. the 11 million he gets this year. Mm-hmm. So they're not going to do it again. And yeah, he can't sit out. He's going to have to play. It's like you can't A, take all those fines and then B, have your career best year be another full year out of people's minds. Think about how much people are just prisoner to the absolute current moment. If mm-hmm. you talk about anything more than six months old, it seems like people are like, ah, what's he done? You know, like, right, uh, right, like right. That, that's, that's why we can't have like serious, like actual discussions and debates when we want to talk about like comparing players to different eras, because you already have people who are saying like Devin Booker's better than Kobe. Like I've seen those conversations and I'm just like, are you stupid? Like, yeah, they are a lot of people, yeah. stupid, but you know, this, but it's because they just, only, just stay in age. yeah, they're, they only saw old Kobe. 
Mm. And now they're watching Booker and during the hottest run of his career. And he, they look Bro. at what they project like, Oh, obviously it's going to just continue going up, up, up from here. Right. Maybe, maybe not more likely not, <laughs> but like, everyone just focuses on what they see now and everything else is forgotten about. They lose all the context. It's like, they only keep the glimmer of the idea. And that's why you got people like you got people already forgetting like that Dirk did anything. And like, Hey, I used to get bothered by that. Like you disrespectful son of a bitch. But now I'm just like, you know what? Who cares, man? Dirk himself doesn't care. He's just like, whatever. I did my thing. I came in, I did what I wanted to do. It don't matter. Yeah. He literally doesn't even like he literally already defers saying that Luca is the greatest Maverick of all time. I'm like, Dirk, dirty. I love you. But no, like it, you don't have to crown him that hard. He already gets all the love and appreciation he needs. But like everyone just focuses on the here and now. And like in the case of um, Schultz, like waiting a whole nother year to actually play, even if he was willing to somehow incur those fines, he's not going to get like as big of a a contract the following year. So it's like, it's not even in the realm of consideration. He's going to have to play. So wait him out and then go run him out for the franchise tag one year, whatever you decided you were going to pay him 11 million for the year, deal with it and hope that Ferguson shows you enough that you don't get cornered into sticking with him any longer. You shouldn't have to even get cornered sticking with him. That's the problem. You shouldn't feel that way because he's not that type of player. Mm-hmm. If you're they, always they should have gone about, with the other guys. If they're if Stephen Jones is staying true to his word because he said it out of his mouth, we're not going to play regular players great money. Mm-hmm. He said that. That's why they don't go out in free agency and don't do that. He also said we're going to sign our own. Okay, well you have to look across the board. Is this guy worth being signed? When you look at this and that, and it's no disrespect to Dalton Schultz, get your money. But is Dalton Schultz going somewhere else and getting 14 million and turning no. up and going crazy? No, he's not. I don't believe it. And if it does happen, okay, but I'm still not going to believe it. You know what I'm saying? Like I've seen Dalton Schultz enough to say he's an okay player. Like he's a okay. He's not a bad player. Yeah, yeah, he's not that he's upper fine. echelon. He's not that upper echelon player, and you don't have to jump out there just because the market dictates. Stephen Jones says it time and time again. We're not going to set the market. How many times has Stephen Jones said we're not resetting the market? So if you're not resetting the market, this is a prime example for you not to reset the market and sign those shows to a multi-year deal. You should yeah. sit there and say we're not. If July fifteenth comes. We'll just wait you out because you will have to come to camp because once you sign that franchise tag, you are going to get fined now if you do not show up for a mandatory camp. So you can miss the OTAs, but you will be at mandatory camp and then just move on from there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I agree. He's he's a nice player, but he's not a mismatch nightmare. He's not a a game-breaking dynamic talent. And to me, that alone would say not worth franchising, but – whatever again this is what they chose to do so as long as it's a one-year stopgap fine but if they hitch their wagon to him long term i'm going to be incredibly frustrated my eyes might roll so hard in my head that i might faint like i won't even roll my eyes when i roll i'll just be like that's the cowboy way this is what they do yeah it's uh it's tough being a cowboy fan sometimes i'm not gonna lie man yeah it is Uh, well uh, what else we got in cowboy land right now? Oh, I mean, you know, I think I talked about, notes? I mean, just quick hit notes. Uh, the whole day, the home run derby the other, uh, last night, I believe. Yep. Um, and Michael Parsons went nuts once again, showing his athleticism. A lot of, you know, Dak said he, he's one of the best athletes ever seen in his life. Jordan Lewis said he's like that as well. Um, so, you know, Michael Parsons, you know, I kind of said, I didn't kind of say, I did say it. I said, like, last month that, you know, I thought he was becoming the new face of the Cowboys. I know Dak Prescott. I know how much they pushed Dak, especially after he got his contract. Mm -hmm. Um, But when I see Dak, he's not taking these interviews like that anymore. Maybe he's going underground and working on his craft. But now all I see is Michael Parsons in the in the in the media, and all I see is Michael Parsons all over Cowboys faces, and 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 everybody's interviewing Michael Parsons and sitting down and loving what Michael Parsons saying. So it's like to me the Michael Parsons show now in Dallas, Um, Mm -hmm. and he's backed it up with the first year. But now, I mean, I can ask you this. What do you feel about that? I mean, uh, would you say that he's becoming the new face of the Cowboys right now? I, th- I think it definitely has that vibe where it seems like it's trending that way. And it's not the worst thing. In fact, for his 
sake, it's the smartest thing he could do is to keep putting himself out there and doing that because that's going to translate to his value whenever his inevitable contract situation does come up. Which and, is going to be crazy. And I feel like that's going to be sooner than later. I feel like the Cowboys have already kind of opened a can of worms when they let Zeke, you know, push that button two years before his rookie deal was up. Mm -hmm. I don't know that Micah would play quite the same hard ball, but at the same time, I don't put anything past past it anymore. So if he balls out again this year, higher uh, level, same, same or higher level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the leverage in the world, plus being the, the face at that point, mm -hmm. potentially of the team. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how you, how you manage that. Like, I guess Zeke, Zeke, when he pulled that move, he really wasn't anymore. Like it was Dak. Zeke maybe for his first two years was kind of seen as the face, but by year three, really more four year four, uh, around, I guess the time Zeke did that, uh, it was, it was Dak. Like that was considered the face of the Cowboys and everything. So, uh, I don't know, man. I, I think it's smart for Micah to do it. I do get those vibes, but I also think it's just the fact that Dak and Zeke, the sort of old guard of, you know, being that central figure, They've been around for a while and they've done it and they're kind of like, all right. Yeah. Like our, we're established here. We don't have to like defend this Hill. If it makes sense. Like, like you said, we can just go do our thing and just focus on whatever we're going to do for Micah. It's like, this is the show. This is what he wanted. When he talked while he was still at Penn state dreaming of being a cowboy, like this is what he envisioned was like being this central figure at the center of it all. Uh, the greatest circus, if you will. And like that fits and he's got the on on field talent to turn heads league wide. Like, yeah, that's a perfect recipe to be the face of this franchise, even though he's a defensive player and God knows they love their offense. Yeah. But you know, it could be a changing of the guard in that aspect because of Dan Quinn, mm -hmm. uh, because he's a D he, I mean, everybody loving Dan Quinn right now too. And he's got a lot of pull and a lot of say within one year, he has a lot of say of what goes on in that building as far as player personnel, as far as guys he wants. So him and Micah has been a great marriage um, so far. So I can definitely see him being the face right now. And even though he is a defensive player, he's a marketable defensive player. Mm -hmm. He's not a defensive player that you're like bored with because he has the star power. He knows how to speak and talk in the media. Right. And because of that, and he has the talent to match it, I think the Cowboys are just kind of, banking off of it now and now kind of riding the wave uh, because as I said even though he's not offense getting touchdowns sacks are huge forced fumbles interceptions when you're a defensive player like the Lawrence Taylors and those type of guys um, that's still a hot commodity and it's still very marketable um, and so um, with that personality I just feel like he is starting to become the new face he's young he's only what 21 maybe 22 years old I think 22 um, now yeah 22 now all kinds of athletic he can back it up. I think he's going to have a tremendous second year this year. I don't think it was anything a mirage of the first year. I don't think he's the type of player that's going to fall off after that one year. I think his trajectory is going to go even higher and higher, and he's going to really become that dude in the NFL, in my opinion. Um, so I feel like the Cowboys, if they this is what they do, go ahead and market it. And I think he is becoming that face, and it's cool. Let that pressure be, be leave away from Dak. Put all the pressure on Michael Parsons. That would mm -hmm. be great. And then maybe they can leave Dak Prescott alone and then he can go ahead and quietly lead this team, hopefully, to something great later on. Maybe. I, I certainly wouldn't be opposed. Yeah. But, hey, I got something else I want to talk about. Ezekiel Elliott, man. Yep. He's in the news because, you know, he's saying he's eager to prove, just like the Cowboys are eager to prove people wrong. No, I'm not listening to none of that. But I'll, here's my thing. I want to ask you a question. Yep. <clears throat> Marcus Lawrence just signed a new deal where he signed like a kind of more like a guaranteed deal where he's getting that full contract in those three years, the way he uh, gave up the money to really uh, allow the Cowboys to possibly sign other players. Right. And it hadn't really been done in Dallas. So he has a pretty much a three year guaranteed deal pretty much could end his career in Dallas or however it happens. Cause I know he's going to be like 30 some years old, but Ezekiel Ellis, 26 going on 27 years old. Would you be opposed if Ezekiel LA, let's say his 1,200 yards this year, would you be opposed of the Cowboys keeping him in a deal like they did with Demarcus Lawrence, um, kind of maybe ending his maybe football type career out with the Cowboys, or maybe with another three year deal and end out when he's like 30 or 31? Would you be opposed to that, or would you say, um, 
no, I'm kind of done with the Zika out of this year. It's time to move on and get somebody else. I mean, for the record, I didn't want to give him the last contract, but uh, if he had 1,200 yards, that would be his first thousand yard season in like three goes. No, right? he had th- he had thousand yard last year. He had a thousand last year. Mm-hmm. He that's why he stayed in that Philly game. Mm, that's right. That's right. I thought he just stayed just under it, but okay. Yeah. All right. Well, 1200 yards would be his best in like three years. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would be a, certainly a bounce back year. I thought last year had more potential to be a bounce back year. I, in fact, I wrote about it. Um, he did get injured though. He did, but that also frustrates me because we saw how he was allowed just to kind of keep taking those touches and getting the line share, even though he clearly, regressed like because of the injury like i get it like oh it's it's not going to get any worse well it kind of sucks like your run game went from balancing the offense to completely imploding and it made everything else harder and i don't know i i'm i frust i'm frustrated with the coaching staff for that but as far as a new deal like how so how would that affect his current deal right like how many Years does well, he still I have mean, left on the current the, one? The way his uh, contract is set up, they can do, do that out, and I believe they'll save like over ten million dollars if they do the out next year. They just kind of have to wait till that contract kind of ends, but the out is next year. Okay, um, at the end of this season, so they can remove themselves, and the cap hit is not going to be significant mm-hmm. like it would be this year. Because if they just released him, it'd have been like a twelve million dollar hit. Um, but if they do it next year, it's not going to be that. But they can do it like they're paying like, like D law at that point. Yeah. And that point renegotiated to where he gives up a bunch of money for the Cowboys uh-huh. to sign somebody else again. And he gets a deal like Demarcus Lawrence, where it's kind of like a guaranteed three year deal. You're 27 years old. You're kind of maybe finisher. We'll see. We don't know how much longer our running back plays after that. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Maybe kind of we keep you in Dallas. Uh, because you're still maybe marketable because Ezekiel Elliott still is marketable and they love him in Dallas. Um, and he still has clout. No matter what a lot of people say, a lot of people still love Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah. Uh, the Joneses mm-hmm. definitely care about marketability for sure. Mm-hmm. My thing is like, I, again, I probably wouldn't because right. I, I think it, I think he's an inhibitor at this point. I think he's blocking a progress stopper. Right. Uh, I think it's, kind of similar there where we could be doing other things, at the running back position that would be getting equivalent or better production at a way less price. Now, if you, if you've got an out after next year, then I'm taking the out because I, I don't want to be paying this much for my running back anyway, especially when his production has slipped overwhelmingly year over year. Um, but could I see Dallas to your point? Could I see Dallas doing that? Yes, I could see Dallas doing that. Would Zeke willingly do that? Maybe for the long-term security he would. Um, but God, if he was going to do that, I would say like my only requirement is like, all right, we'll pay you like this. But we're we're doing 50-50 on like the running back looks here. Maybe not like legitimately 50-50, but we're balancing this. We're not gonna basically make it where you're the featured guy and we're hardly using uh, you know, our our oh, other yeah whether it's pollard or whoever i mean i'm thinking like three years ahead so i'm trying to think like all right well they're not going to resign pollard who's going to be the running back then right whoever the other running back is um you know we got to have balance it's like if you want to be the ceremonial starter if you will um fine but i i don't want him to be the featured back at this point he can be productive for you still that's great get production out of him while you can but for what you're paying, I don't want him to be the end all be all. And I don't want it to be a situation where he's blocking uh, the running back position depth and development. Right. Well, I feel like I said, I feel you with that, but you know, if they don't bring back TP, like I don't think they will, I think Mm -hmm. they should still go after a running back. That's going to already say that you're not going to be the starter. When you come into the next year, you're probably going to be the backup at this point now. Um, if they pay him and, you know, work out something where it's going to be okay. So I think Steven Jones will do something like that. I feel like the Cowboys organization, I thought they would move on from him. Steven Jones already mentioned his money, but 
If he still has star power in Dallas, they will consider keeping him for the simple fact that he's bringing people still in the stands. That's the way the Cowboys work. Money, they want to say money. all they want yeah, yeah. Um, about winning being first and they're trying to win the Super Bowl. It's about that money first and whatever can market that team to get more money into this building. They're going to do that. And that's what they're going to stay on top of. And if they can make sure they still stay competitive in that, that's good for them um, because nobody can come at them saying they're not trying. I know their evil ways and how they try to spin it to people. Yeah. But like I said, I don't follow. I'll fall for that because, like I said, it looks good to the media. It looks good to the fans that it looks like they're still trying. But in aspect, they're just trying to keep that money going. I mean, at this point, even the even the players at camp have acknowledged the team is not as talented of a roster as it was pound for pound as last year. So, like, they can say however they want. They can say, like, oh, we're going for it. But it's like. You, know, you look at it, it, you look at it and it's just like, no, you're not like you, you made a calculated decision and whatever motivated that decision was not trying to go win a Super Bowl right now. Like I saw some stat today, just real quick. That was like, it said that Amari Cooper makes this next season makes only $3.5 million more than the median wide receiver salary in the NFL. Like that's, uh, now I'm sure they're talking about like wide receiver like ones, but mm -hmm. again, basically just a hair over like that the middle point. <laughs> like, yeah, that's uh that's pretty interesting that you say he's not worth that. I don't know. I I feel like that's gonna be a move that we're still trying to figure out just what the hell they were thinking or doing or why they came to the conclusion they did and then to somehow only get what they got out of him, like in terms of a trade, it's like, not only did you move on from him, but you found a way to get almost hilariously nothing compared to what all these other premium wide receivers that move teams in the off season got. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm still bitter. Uh, yeah. I just feel like, you know, the front office, especially Stephen Jones, he's just a joke with it. Um, and, and, you know, chemical engineering just wants to add like he's the best guy signing people. Um, there's no pressure on him because nobody's telling them what to do. He's spending daddy's money. Ain't nobody telling them what to do. So there ain't no sense of urgency. I don't care what they say. There's no mm -hmm. sense of urgency. You can't There's. see. I mean, me telling you that there's no sense of urgency when you let go of those players and you didn't really replenish it with players that could really take you over the top. That shows there's no sense of urgency. So they're just proving it. Um, and the coaching staff, I don't know if the front office aren't hindering them as well. Uh, we already had. Um, the problem with the Sean Payton, Mike McCarthy thing, right? And uh, Jerry Jones saying he has an affinity for Sean Payton and Sean Payton quits and he's sitting in the booth for a year with over top of Mike McCarthy's head and Mike McCarthy is uh, hearing all this crazy stuff. So there's already dysfunction with that. So, you know, it's just really just the same old thing in Dallas. Just nothing really changes. It's just the same old thing kind of with Dallas and we'll see what happens this year, but I don't see where. And Dallas wins... 12 games in my opinion, but it's just by default by the schedule. They yeah. say it's one of the easiest schedules. And when you look at toward the end of the year, it really, they're all, a lot of those are winnable games because of the talent that has the talent, but playoffs is what it really matters to me now with the Cowboys, not no regular season. Yeah, no, I agree. It's a, uh, it's always a circus and all the Joneses care about is that it's entertaining win, mm -hmm. lose. They Jerry don't care. Just be entertaining, I mean, entertaining, make money. They don't even care. Yep. He, uh, he said he don't even care if it's negative press. As long as Dallas is in the press, even his negative press, he's cool with that. Jerry's got three titles and he's in the Hall of Fame. There's literally nothing else he needs at this point. At this point, anything is just icing on I the see, cake. I, icing on the cake. Yep. And he knows it. And he's trying to fool all these fans out here. He's sitting there saying everything's house money. Doesn't matter. Right. I'm good. Yep. People, I'm still I'm winning. I'm, I'm still making big money. How am I losing right here? Yeah. Fans might be mad, but they're still coming to the stands. Yep. They ain't that mad. Right. hundred <laughs> percent. I agree. So there it mm. is. So yeah, it is what it is with these Cowboys, man, but we'll see. OTAs are uh, mandatory. Mini camp is right around the corner. Um, I think they have another set of OTAs like on between the 10th and 12th and the 14th. Yeah. Then mini camp is right around the corner. Then training camp. I'm going to be out there at the end of July. 
uh first week of august you know it's kind of an annual thing with me now ddp i just like going to cali now yeah you know i mean i've been nice. out there three straight years uh so i'll be out there at camp again so i'm excited about that part and i do like seeing the young players i want to see tyler smith what's really going to happen with him a left guard left tackle jake from state farm ferguson see what how jalen tober is back at practice now uh that confirmed that um you know and we're going to see sam williams the the michael parsons look alike Yep. Uh, you know, he's getting rave reviews. So some things to really look at heading into training camp and some interesting stories of what's going to really happen um, with the receiving core, um, defense, um, linebackers. Then. So it'll, it'll be interesting as we get ready to come up to that.